calculate. And what they also calculate, if you watch this fire, it looks laminar, but there are eddies moving up. So this thing is puffing, puffing. And they say they do a pretty good job at getting the puffing cycle. Uh, I think that's a good test. Well, I've seen CFD modelers try to do puffing. They don't seem to get it right. So that looks like a good result to me. And they calculate now other things. Uh, velocity. Uh, this is vertical velocity. So nice results. Uh, you know, you, you could argue with differences. But for me as an engineer, that looks good. Now, go to horizontal velocity, I mean, to me, that's phenomenally accurate because you're calculating such slow flows in this direction through, through the flame zone. Uh, you can look at these flows here. This is half a meter, meter a second. So these flows are of the order of uh, 0.05 meters a second, 5 centimeters per second, uh, down here for some of this data. So very, very slow flows. Obviously, the experiment has to be done carefully, otherwise this flame is going like this, and comparison mean, is meaningless. So, she, they're calcul they, they are operating against good data. Now, the toluene, it's much more difficult, because there's a lot more soot, and when you get down low in the flame, you see this is a height to diameter ratio, so, so you're moving down, this is 0.8 up to 3.5. So you go away, and it's giving fairly good results, but inside the deep in the flame, where this soot is being created, uh, there's some differences uh, out here. So, but still, I, I think that's, uh, that's pretty good. Uh, here's another experiment. I believe this work is done at Sandia Laboratory in the U.S. Someone could correct me if That's I'm right. wrong. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is a very nice experiment. A lot of good measurements made in this experiment. And they are using uh, that. Now look, they are using uh, grid size that's variable, obviously. So they really want to capture what's happening in the flame zone in this one meter fire now. And they use this different uh, radiation model. Again, modelers like this know what P1 means. Uh, here's their results. Uh, vertical velocity, uh, different positions. Moving up the flame, I, I think not so bad. Uh, soot contours, so I guess this is their theoretical. I guess there's no measurements with that, but it gives some idea of how soot is forming. You can see 0 0.0005, nothing, and then as you move up, you start to get uh, uh, 0.03. So, and then you're going away, and now it's 0.02. So that, and you can see the flame is in this region here. Uh, horizontal velocity, pretty good, I think. Now, here's a pool fire. Everyone goes back to this data. This is McCaffrey's data from the 1970s. Uh, he developed correlations for this, and many people use those correlations today in predictions. Uh, Jennifer Wen is in the UK. McCaffrey's data was later corrected by Jeff Cox and Smith. They worked closely together, McCaffrey and Jeff Cox. And McCaffrey, if he were alive today, would tell you this data is not accurate because he used a thermocouple and didn't correct the radiation. And Smith and Cox did it later. And so these temperatures here that McCaffrey gets should be higher. They should be as high as almost 1100 K in that flame zone. 
So that's something to keep in mind. Now, they tried to calculate this. Uh, they capture some of this. This is going away, you know, for, before the fuel starts to react. It's coming out of the burner. And then, let's see, the, the bottom one is no, uh, with radiation. So, with radiation, the flame cools. Makes sense. And the model that is showing that. But if with radiation is the right thing, and this data should be higher, still something is not working quite right. Uh, so probably that's embedded in the P1 modeling. And, and again, you know, that's very difficult to model that radiation. Uh, and that radiation loss depends on temperature as well as soot. So there, there's, there's a challenge there. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, trends are right. Uh, if you go into this region here, it's doing good with the plume, uh, particularly in this in so-called intermittent region where the flame is fluctuating uh, highly. Uh, and here you can see some other results. Uh, I won't uh, get into the details. <coughs> Room fire experiments done by people at NIST. Uh, fires in a room with a door, and now they model this. Notice in the computations, the, the model is extended beyond the door. So that's a very important, because if you were to use a code like FDS, which is on automatic, and just say this is the vent, and I put my vent boundary condition in there, I guarantee you, you'll get the wrong answer because that vent boundary condition is wrong. So these people are rightly doing, taking this outside and putting a pressure boundary here, which they have to do in this problem to close it. Uh, so this is the nature of the uh, problem. Uh, temperature of species uh, measured in different uh, uh, places. This is their numerical description. You can see a uniform grid they're using here. Uh, and they use two grid sizes to do the problem. So coarse and fine. Their P1 radiation model. And then methane, heptane, toluene. Uh, they just compare, I guess, uh, peak steady state results for the results and you see uh, temperature over range of the fuels uh, not so bad I mean this is 800 this is 800 this is a 45 degree line pretty good uh, doorway velocity not so bad Sorry, that's a time's up okay time's up and, they and, 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 and there are the conclusions so thank you. Thank you very and much. And I'm sorry that I held you up. I, I... <coughs> thank you. We have no time for questions. I'm sorry. Okay, I couldn't answer them. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank to the presenters, the authors, and the audience. But uh, I have uh, uh, something to tell you. Please uh, go to the main entrance of this building. The organizing committee uh, decided to, to take a group picture, group photo, uh, if you don't mind, uh, before lunch, okay? Thank you very much.